So the last time we described what a homotopy of paths was. And if F and G are paths in our space X, um, if there exists a homotopy between them, we say that F is homotopic to G and we write it like this. Uh, so this is homotopic. I want to show now that a homotopy of paths is an equivalence relation. So what do we need to show to show that? Well, we need to show ref reflexivity. So reflexive. And what does that look like? Okay, well, we want to show that F some path is homotopic to itself. In order to do that, we need to construct a homotopy from F to itself. And so what should that look like? Well, that's just going to be the homotopy where we set uh, H T of X is equal to F of X for all T in the interval. So again, previously we had this our, our punctured disc example and we had a path from here to here and we said that you could sort of draw movies between paths continuous continuous families of paths between paths in the reflexive case we just say oh take them all to be the same map so we just take the movie where for, for one second we just look at that path sitting there by itself. Okay? The next property that we need to show is that it's transitive. Okay, so we want to show that if F is homotopic, homotopic to G and G is homotopic to H, then... F is homotopic to H. Okay. And so the way that you should think intuitively about this is that if I put another path here and then another path here, and then I said I could continuously deform the top one into the middle one, and that I could continuously deform the middle one into the bottom one, well, then I just take those two deformations and do one after the other to deform the top one into the bottom one. Uh, but we should construct another homotopy. And what's that homotopy going to look like? Okay, well, there's a homotopy here. I'm going to call that uh, capital H. And there's a homotopy here, which I'm going to call capital K. All right, and I'm going to construct a homotopy here which I'm going to call T. Why not? Um, all right. So T is going to be from the interval across the interval into X. Uh, and I'm going to define T as follows. I'm going to say that on the first half of the time interval, I want to do H. So if, um, so I want to send Tx to, all right, I want to send it to H, and I want to do it twice as fast so that it still fits into an interval, so I'm going to send it to 2Tx, and I'm going to do that if T is in the interval from one to a half. And then I'm going to do K. And I'm going to do, let's see, I'm going to do 2T minus 1. So that at T is a half, this is going to be 0. And at T is 1, this is going to be 1. 
of x if t is contained in half to 1. Okay, uh, now the only, there are, there are two questions you should ask yourself here. Is this well defined? Um, and it is because at a half here, uh, the slice in our square is g, and at a half here, the slice in our square is g. Um, but secondly, is this t a continuous map from the interval across the interval to x? Uh, and the answer is yes, um, and that's a consequence of something you should know from points of topology, which is that if you glue two closed sets, um, if, if you have a function defined on the union of two closed sets and it's continuous on each of those sets, um, then the, it's continuous on that union. All right, and finally, we want to talk about, so we've done reflexive, transitive, and we need to do symmetric. All right, so we want that if F is homotopic to G, then G is homotopic to F. All right, so intuitively, the way to see that this is symmetric is well I said you can deform one into the other say the top to the middle by pushing it down uh, but then we can equally do the same thing backwards and push the bottom up the middle up to the top by the same series but in, in reverse order so if this is by H I'm gonna say that you wanna make this by say a homotopy S S of TX is going to be h of 1 minus tx. And that gives you a homotopy going from g to f. Alright, thanks.